What's up bro, I know it's been a couple of weeks since I last uploaded, but here we are, finally, part 3 of how to make an inventory system. In part 1 we created where we'd store the items for the inventory, in part 2 we created functions that would let us better manage the inventory, meaning functions to add, remove and count items. And here, on this third part, we'll be making the inventory visible for the player, just like what you're seeing on screen right now. Remember that the place I'm creating this inventory system in is downloadable in the description just in case you want to take a look at it yourself. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so before we do anything, I gotta quickly explain some stuff regarding the UI. Otherwise, you might get a little lost if this is the first time you've done something like this. I'm not gonna explain it in depth. If you want a more in-depth explanation, let me know and I'll probably make a tutorial on it explaining it better. If you downloaded the file in the description, you'll see this UI in Storage UI. Ignore everything, the thing that interests us is the scrolling frame called Inventory Frame. Scrolling frames, like their name suggests, are frames that have scrolling properties. So if you have a list or anything like that, you'd ideally want to use scrolling frames if the list is too long. However, scrolling frames do not automatically organize any items that you put inside of it. So we'll be using something called UI Grid Layout. So we get it organized. The properties of the UI grid layout will depend on your UI, so there's no specific set of properties that will fit all UIs. The most important thing that you have to memorize though is that the way the elements will be created is by duplicating a template. So this is an item template which is a button. You want it to be clicked so you can do stuff with it later in your game, right? That's why it has to be a button. This one specifically is a text button and I just set its transparency to 1 and removed any text in it. All we want from this is the clickable property. Inside of this we have a text label called item name which is meant to display the name of the item and we also have another text label called amount which is meant to display how how much of said item we have. What we will do with a script is duplicate this template and set the text value of item name to whatever the name of the item is and text value of amount to the corresponding amount of each item. Before we do any of that though, make sure to make it so that the item template does not show itself in the final result, meaning you have to turn its visible property to false. Otherwise, players will have an item called item template and we don't want that. Now we can start scripting. Inside inventory frame, create a local script and call it load inventory inside the script insert a remote function and call it get player inventory and inside that create a server script and later you will see why we need all this open load inventory local script as you can see this will be a short script don't worry i'll explain everything that you can see on screen since we'll work with the item template button and the inventory scrolling frame we have to get them as variables we'll also need to get the remote function we just created and the last two global variables we'll need are the player service and the local player now that we got that out of the way there are going to be two functions that we're going to be using for this the function clean inventory which is going to remove all items that are inside the scrolling frame and the function update inventory which is going to create the items and add them into the scrolling frame let's first start with clean inventory so to remove all items inside the scrolling frame we'll loop through the children of inventory scrolling frame using an in purse loop inside the loop we'll want to check for two things if the item is a text button we use b colon e say button for that we use this because we don't want it to accidentally remove the ui grid layout or the local script that's inside of it and next we'll check to see if v is not the item template because if the item template gets removed then we won't be able to load the inventory again because remember that's what we'll be duplicating to use as items lastly inside the if statement put v colon destroy and that's it now anytime we call this function it'll pretty much just clean the inventory scrolling frame meaning destroy all items inside of it where would we call this function you might be asking that's when we get into our next function update inventory so we call our last function inside this function and that's just the first thing we do this will make sure that every time it reloads the inventory then it'll destroy the items it created last time it opened the menu. Next, we need to get player inventory list, meaning the inventory module of the player. Here's when we'll need to use the remote function. We'll use it to send a signal to the server so we can get the inventory. So create a variable and name it player inventory. And from inside the variable, you're going to invoke the remote function. Why not just require the module from here and get the information from this local script? The reason we don't do that is because local scripts won't be able to get the updated content that's inside of the modules. Why? I don't know why that's just how it is so we gotta get it from the server script and return it to this local script how do we do that this is when we'll need the server script inside of the remote function we created go ahead and open that one now in this script you're gonna have to get the get player remote function that the script is parented to 
you also want to get replicated storage and through that you'll get the player inventories folder and now all you have to do is receive the invoke get the corresponding player inventory through player.user id and return player inventory this will make the variable player inventory in the local script be equal to the player's inventory next we'll need to transfer the function get amount of from the inventory template module remember we created that our last video if you haven't watched that then just go watch it just copy and paste it here and give it the proper function format since it's no longer inside a module this will let us check how many of a certain item a player has now we loop through the player inventory list we got earlier inside the loop we add this if statement to check if there's no instance with the same item name that we're trying to create because we don't want two elements in the inventory to needlessly repeat itself this is what will prevent that from happening inside the if statement you clone item template make the text property of the item name label equal to whatever the name of the item it's currently iterating rename the cloned instance to the name of the item it's iterating through make it visible parent it to the scrolling frame otherwise it won't show and the last thing we're gonna do here is just make the amount label reflect how many of that item the player currently has you get the amount text label inside the clone template now inside a variable i named it amount in inventory inside this we call the function get amount of and put as the argument the item it's iterating through in this case represented by v right and this will set the variable amount inventory equal to the amount of the item the player has finally we make the text property of the amount text label to x concatenated to string amount inventory which will just add the number we get in the amount inventory to the string x why use to string because amount inventory is a number it's not really necessary to do this because studio automatically converts the number to a string when you concatenate but it's whatever okay so we've finished the two functions we need but we're not done yet we still gotta call the main function which is update inventory so add a task that wait 10 after this which is gonna make it wait 10 seconds before anything happens and then you call the update inventory function why do i do this because you want to be able to see the change remember we're just testing this so add a task.wait 10 after this and then call the update inventory function and then it'll reflect your inventory there i added a print saying updated inventory after this to match when the update is done now we can finally test this and once you've waited 10 seconds it'll update your inventory obviously in a real game you don't want to make it wait 10 seconds and then just run randomly pop up the inventory you want to call this function ideally whenever you open your inventory menu but i'm not really going to explain to you how to do that since it's incredibly simple if you know how to handle input detection and basic ui handling remember you got a link to the file where i created all of this in the description also we got a discord server full of cool people if you want to join a community of devs then you know what to do with all this being said keep leveling up bro be safe and i'll see you when i see you peace